Hey everybody, we're back. On the Welcome duck. back. Welcome back. I ain't on the duck call room. Every time I sit in this chair, Clay McConnell calls me. He's it does not guy. matter. I don't care what day it is, what time of day. It's like he knows. It's because his hair is recording. full of secrets. Yeah, it's like an antenna. It must start tingling. Maybe he's got some spidey senses or something. We you should put a know. picture of Clay up just so people know. Well, he. I don't know if he's had his tips frosted lately. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, who sent this in? I, Before we get started. Man, I forgot his name, but he knows that he sent it in. But we have at, an action figure of a giraffe, along with an action figure of Uncle Si, which I didn't know were still around, riding on top of the giraffe. That's, what, the, that's where I need to be, right there. Right there. Have the Si action figures been around long enough now to be like vintage for sure. I mean, are they like coming back into style? Size vintage. Is he? It's got to be. I, I am vintage. 75 years worth of it. Thank you. Do you feel vintage or do you feel oh, yeah. brand new? Oh, yeah. No. No, I feel vintage. <laughs> what makes you Except feel? Except for the mental capacity of it. The mental capacity of it, I'm a 14-year-old. I will say you're sharper than a lot of. Than most. Yeah. I mean, you ain't you ain't showed no signs of slowing down other than you want to ride a giraffe. I, that makes me question where your head could be sometimes, but. You can buy one of those exact action figures on eBay right now for $5, pre-owned. It's does not it, sealed. Does it come with a teacup? No. Because I've got the teacup in my office. I forgot it. I just don't know where said teacup fits. I couldn't make it fit in his hand. Looking at this, and I wonder if a giraffe can outrun a racehorse. You know? The thoroughbred, the thoroughbred racehorse. We're gonna have to Google. a real, a real race. Hey, send somebody an Instagram message asking them that instead of googling it. Yeah, never mind. That's a that's rant. a I was different on thing. Before we started recording, I'm sorry. Uh, who that, who can win the race? A giraffe or a or a true racehorse? I think it. I'm going racehorse. Who would? I don't know. He just looks awkward. Look he's got to be. T- he's got to be top heavy though. Yeah, but look at his long legs. Yeah, but. I mean, he can cover a lot of space in like a few steps, but and not all that. This animal is chased by lions and such as that. I think when he gets that big, he ain't chased by much. Well, here's the deal: the horse has won the Kentucky Derby every every time. time. The giraffes never won it. The giraffes have never won it. I don't know. If they- have they ever even qualified? <laughs> well, I've never think, seen I, one. I don't think they've ever raced for it. <laughs> Must mean they're slow. Big dummy. <laughs> you big dummy. <laughs> I can't find. <laughs> apparently, no one else hey. has ever considered this question. Hey, uh, that's the question you need to ask. Oh, man. Can a, ja- a giraffe enter the Kentucky Derby? If it could, I would go and I would wear a stupid hat and I would be so excited to be there. <laughs> I, I'm only going if they let Cy jockey it. So, uh, uh, hey, you got to have him up here. Got to get up on high. his neck. Oh, a horse is gonna whoop him! No. Yep. You think a horse is winning? Top speed of a giraffe, thirty-seven. Oh, quarter horses. I'm assuming that's the fastest horse. Thoroughbred. Yeah. Have been clocked running fifty-five. Oh, yeah, that's out. Fifty-five. That's like me and Martin. And a giraffe only runs thirty-seven. Well. Si, I would think if you look back in time, you know they brought a lot of horses over here from. Whenever they yeah, settled, they, they, when they, they settled they America, sell, they didn't settle the West with a giraffe. <laughs> no cowboys on a giraffe. No, I mean, hey, I, I just, water, I, baby. I'm just, hey, I've, hey I hate the bow. <laughs> I mean, as a man who watches as many westerns as you do, giraffe didn't help settle the West. <laughs> okay it uh, would have been a lot cooler if they did uh, though it would have it would have hey, man those see, movies would actually like, see that. be shooting yeah. down on everybody right yeah that, it'd make it a way easier shot yeah because yeah. you could see where you miss they eat a lot yeah. man kick dust up right beside him i got this for <laughs> feeding a giraffe at the houston zoo they gave you a bracelet yeah how much that cost you well like 15 bucks 15 bucks, <laughs> 15 for, bucks for three pieces of lettuce and three bracelets well it is like earth week but so I it's wear cool it. that we're talking about giraffes and is stuff. it earth week i think isn't it no aren't, idea aren't we that time of year like we're we're crowding it if it's not we're we're around it i can't believe that he can't reach but 37 miles an hour hold on i'm about to show you this picture side this is a good one but I got to send it to I my can't. computer. I bet if there was a short neck giraffe, he could go a lot faster. I bet it's a, that's a lot of wind resistance up high, man. That, that, like, yeah, if could, like if he could, like if he could, if he could, if he could, if he could lay it down though. Oh, he gonna streamline. Trip, but he gonna trip over that tongue. 
Hey. It is a long tongue. Here you go. Volk. Here was the Houston Zoo right there. There you there. go. Look. That's me and Lottie feeding a giraffe. Look, and she looks <laughs> like she doesn't want to kill the giraffe, which is new for her. It is very new for her. <laughs> but, like, you got to go up a lot of steps to yeah. feed a giraffe, oh, yeah. like 10 of them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And look where they've bent that, that deal. That oh, frame. yeah. They done bit that. Or is that supposed to be like I that? think it's supposed to look like sticks or something. Oh, I got you. Okay. Oh, right. so that's sticks that are bent, not the hey, metal. It looks like it's bent iron. Can you pet him? No, you're not supposed to touch him. Not touch him. Okay. No touching. No touching. Um, let me see. No, no touch. touch. Here. Yeah, you can't touch it. If you go to the zoo and, the, and they let you feed the giraffe, they won't let you touch it. So you what? probably don't need to go. Well, what if he touches you? Well, that's out of your control. <laughs> Hey, I was just standing here. That rascal touched yeah. me. Hey. I don't know. I what. was just standing matter here doing he, this, and he leaned in. In fact, he kissed me. <laughs> I would like to pet a tongue. giraffe. By- and it was all tongue because his tongue's that long. Look at him. Look, there we are actually feeding him. <laughs> That's cool. I'm between them to take the blow if the giraffe decided to get, you know. Exactly. Does he have horns on top of his head? We've Is discussed this in full, and I can't remember, to be mm-hmm. honest. He's a... Uh, He's she's sticking her tongue out just like he's sticking his out. Oh no, no. That's kinda cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was a good time. Houston Zoo's a good one. And he's just eating some lettuce. Hey, I tell y'all the Tyler Zoo got run ostriches again. No, but I'm looking at that ostrich in the background. Why do they always put ostrich with the drafts? Like all the long neck freaks gotta go in the same pen together. <laughs> Why you gotta do that, zoos? Yeah. Separate them. They ain't gotta be categorized. Oh. Does ostrich really stick his head in the sand? I hear that. I don't know, but he'll put that one toe right through the middle of your chest. Oh, no. given My uncle had an ostrich farm yeah, at one you've point. Had, you've had a dealings with an ostrich, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I've been treated by one. My uncle had an ostrich farm, and you could what? be outside the fence running back and forth. You weren't beating them in a race. No. Hey. Them hookers are Ostrich fast. eggs is about that big around. Yeah, Jordan brought one home. They, yeah. They, uh, Willie bought one on, that, on his little adult Disneyland trip he went on mm-hmm. for their breakfast. And they like and I ate drill, it. yeah. They took a drill bit and made an omelet for like ten people or something. It, it's like two dozen regular chicken eggs. <laughs> yeah, you can't crack them. No, they it's took a drill bit, bit, like drill a hole in the top, drill a hole in the bottom, and then here it come out. Cooking with power tools is the best. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you oh, you cook can't his, crack them. I mean, you could, but it ain't going. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't a. You ain't putting it in a pan. Yeah. I wonder what kind of pan it'd take to hold that. Well, I, fe- I think that one. probably has to be pretty good size. Hey, look, folks, if you're wondering why there's only three of us in here, we have a special guest today, but he only has a certain amount of time to be with us. He's so a busy dude. Yeah, he is a very busy dude. He's, he's also vintage. And he's he's quick, too. So, I mean, he'll be in and out of here before you even know what happens. You won't even know what he said. We don't even want to give many clues about who it is. But, look, we're going to take our first break, and we'll be back right after this. Hey. But but before he gets here, mm-hmm. I I officially need life advice. Okay, well, let's I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna ask you inside for that. All right, JD, you do know we're not talking fans here. Uh oh, what, what are we what are we, are we talking? We, right, we're talking fanatics. Booyah! They are, okay. and you know how long they've had fanatics. <laughs> That's right. Fifteen years. Fifteen years baby. of Tommy John. That's so it. you think the obvious is, well, they're going to go 15% off site. What? No. No. Because Tommy John's cooler than that. But wait, there's more. That's it's right. 20% off. 20% is- off for 15 years of Tommy John's. Because Tommy John always goes above and beyond, especially down below. And that's, that's where it counts. It. Amen, amen. So I know size wearing Tommy John right now. Uh, you got it. That's Call why this duty, pod- baby. Look, our podcast was okay. Until we started wearing Tommy John. Then it got really good. I might be wearing Tommy John's. And I you- wouldn't know if I was. I'm that comfortable. <laughs> I think I am. Let me check. Yes, I am. Hold on. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it. Just feels like a fluffy cloud. Oh, uh, Tommy John underwear moves with you thanks to breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands with over 20 million pairs sold. Yep. And thousands of five-star reviews. People love their Tommy John. That's why Tommy John's doesn't have customers. We got fanatics, boys. There you go. Who crazy say, about them. That they say they're the most comfortable box of briefs ever. There's no downside. Buy one pair and you'll never want to wear any other underwear again. I'm just telling you right now, I tend to agree with that. So Tommy it's John's true. anniversary sale is a perfect time to grab some new Tommy John Apollo underwear. Or if you want the 
the little comfort hammock pouch. Uh oh. If you need to be lifted. Is, if you need Snuggle. loungewear. I'm a loungewear kind of guy. There you go. I mean, boy lounges. Just, he's a lounger, boys. But anyway, plus everything's backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. We love them. So will you get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash duck. 20% off at TommyJohn.com slash duck. TommyJohn.com slash duck. One more time. See site. That's details. Right. For details. In case you're wondering what just happened in that break, we continue to talk about ostrich eggs for an extensive period of time in our experiences. Because why them. wouldn't we? Because right. ostrich eggs are cool, but I have a story, and I didn't really know how to respond to it being a dad. Oh. So obviously it <laughs> well, doesn't- I've got a lot of time under my belt. It doesn't involve got? Lottie, and it doesn't involve Ben's, because why would it? It involves Carter. So yesterday, we're at the church spring fling, right? Uh-oh. So all the church, we all go to church. Then, hey, everybody meet up at Crowley Park this afternoon. Bouncy houses, barbecue, fellowship, fun, all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to say a prayer over the meal. Then we're all just going to hang out and talk. Be a church family. Yeah. Good time. Everybody's having a good time. Carter had a great time. He's playing. Well, then I lose track of him, which is a normal thing that happens. And I'm like, well, I wonder where he's at. But he knows, stay here, so I'm not worried about it. And I look over, and he is wearing an apron. And he is loading up a trailer. Like, he has joined the serve team at church. And I'm so proud. And, and like, I'm like, oh, he's just in the way and they're being nice. And I'm looking over, I'm like, he's working. Uh huh. He's working great. That's cool. So he's getting the boxes. He's, yeah. he's combining boxes of chips, throwing away stuff. He's picking up trash. I'm like, this is awesome. I've dived it. Maybe we're win. on the right track. Hashtag win. So then. Uh-oh. My friend April comes up to me like an hour or so later. Uh-oh. Because he'd come up to me. He's like, Dad, I think I'm tired of doing this. I said, hey, man, you did your part. Good job, buddy. Go ask him to take the apron off and do whatever you want. Go get in the jump house. Him. So then she comes up to me a little while later, and we're good friends with April. She kind of runs all the serve team stuff at church, and she goes, your son is hilarious. I said, oh, no. <laughs> what has he done? <laughs> what? Yeah. Has he done? What has he said? Was he just in the way? I'm sorry. I thought it was helping. Maybe not. She goes, no. He comes up to me and says, hey, can you get this apron off? I'm done working. And she's like, oh, sure, Carter. Hey, Carter, thank you so much for helping. And he looks at her dead in the eyes and says, cool. Um, where do I get my paycheck? <laughs> my man straight up saw an opportunity, said these people need help, and right. I'm going to deliver, and then... That's right. Then I'm going to get paid. Then I'm going to get paid. Yeah, show me the check, boys. So show he the missed money. the lesson about serving. He missed the fact that he was just helping out. Because I tell him, hey, work hard, man, and you'll get paid one yeah, day, yeah. and you got to work hard and earn your money. And it's been like, because he just thinks money grows on trees right now. He's like, hey, give me some Roblox or something like that. And I'm like, hey, no, you got to work hard. I will go to work every day. That way we can afford yeah, that. Just because I want to. Yeah. So yeah, now I have two case deal. So now he thinks, oh, I see a problem. I just go in, help, and somebody somewhere yeah, will pay me. Hand over the money. Well, praise God that initiative still exists in America. That's true. So I was like, I'm now may, it may be a minor bit misplaced. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least he's got the right idea. But, but the initiative yeah. is there yeah. because he, Hey, he's about to be out of school for summer. You want to send him up here for an application? Maybe. Like, it I, might, mean, I don't want him at the honey hole. I need to do. Hoo, hoo. No, anyway, but he straight up is like, what's up, church? Hey, Jesus, appreciate you. Paycheck time, bro. Hey, yeah. way. <laughs> hey, Barry, it's biblical. A worker deserves his way. So how much did you pay? Uh, we went to Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look, bro, you ain't getting paid. Dude. April claims she's going to send him a $1 check from the church. Which I'm gonna have to add back on because I won't be able to sleep at night. Um, <laughs> Better send a dollar fifty four cover that stamp too. Oh, um, good point. But, uh, <laughs> I said I will not deposit uh, it, and we will frame it. But I'm like, I love it. I'm proud of you, but like you got to know, sometimes working is is just for the Lord. Hey, look, I, here's what I'm gonna tell you on this deal. Don't do nothing. <laughs> and I thought about that. Yeah, don't do nothing. I mean, commend the effort. Just tell him there's different times in different places, but commend the effort. Hey, oh, yeah. man, we appreciate you working hard. Like that's all, that's exactly what you have to do. Just not their person. Yeah, you don't want to confuse them. Like, yeah, I, I I picked up all those chip bags and never made a dime. You made Jesus very happy. Yeah, that'll make him happy. I tell yeah. him that. You yeah. made Jesus very happy. Abraham Lincoln would be so proud of you. Who's his hero? George Washington. 
Your man George, yep. he's got it. Like he's very happy that you're an American. But oh. next time, let's talk before we discuss work. Like if you're like, if you feel, yeah, involved. if you feel the need to work, just say, no. hey, man, is this something I can make some money at? No, like, no, this is for the church. Okay, cool. I'm going to go to the jump house. I mean, that's probably the answer you're going to get. <laughs> that's fine. But if you say yes, I mean, he's liable to jump in there. I mean, he gave you a solid hour. That's tight, man. How old is he? Nine. Nine? About, yeah, going to be 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, he was working. I just thought. I, I got 20 year olds here that ain't got that initiative. And they do get a paycheck. They clock in and clock out when they remember to. Hey, I thought it was hysterical <laughs> when they remember to. I remember that. <laughs> But B, I was like, this is funny, but like, it's a little tough navigating because you're like, well, I don't want them to think, oh, if I just pick up a broom and somebody's going to pay me. But no, I, I, mean, I was proud. I was a proud dad. And then hilarity ensued because he's Carter. Yeah. I mean, where's my pay? Where do I pick up my pay? Where do I pick up my pay? We're at the park, son. You think the accountant from church is over there just writing checks to everybody? Hey, he ain't worried about it. If you'd have been, yeah, he should have just taken about a five out of your pocket and said, thanks for the help. Called it good. But. Uh, uh, you know, that is, hey, good on him, man. Hey, you're raising a good kid. Like, if he at least shows the initiative to take, see a task that needs done and goes and does it, hey, you're winning at Parrington. And, that's, look, that's, and then I was trying to get him to Dairy Queen. He's like, nope, I got other stuff to do. I'm like, hey, now you're in, the, now you are in the way. Like, now we're, <laughs> now we're loading up and getting out of here. Like, let's go to Dairy Queen, man. We're proud oh, of it. A you. nine year old me would have took a Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen bribe so fast that it made your head spin. Well, so, woo. Dip cone for so did I. Yeah. <laughs> that Oreo brookie blizzard turned it upside down. I, I, hold on. And the dude that works at Dairy Queen, he got to be 19 or 20. Mm-hmm. Working hard by himself up there. And my kids start, hey, my Carter was like, How's you just, I was upside down. Oh, blew their it. mind, huh? Blew his mind. Kid like took time out of his day, explained it to it. it was working hard. So Dairy Queen man, appreciate you entertaining my child for a minute there. There you go. Look, if it'll stick to that cup, imagine what it does to you entered. Oh. I mean. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's still inside me, and I love every minute of it. Dairy Queen rules. Anyway, that's the latest on oh, life man. adventures with young Carter. Hey, I, I say you're winning, man. I just leave it at if that. If they send him a check, though, I'm framing that sucker up. Oh, his and, first paycheck? I'm stunned that his first paycheck isn't going to come from the honey hole. I mean that that's what that's the coolest thing ever. Like he gets a buck, man, that's cool. I said I felt like oh brother where art thou? Lots of money be made in the service of our Lord. Bible sales, gentlemen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Big Dan. Big Dan. Why oh, they call you Big Dan? Big Dan. Anyway, man. that was what funny happened to me over the weekend and and I thought you'd get a kick out of Carter. So. Hey, I can appreciate that. That's I I just hope mine shows some kind of that sort of initiative. Man. I got one that seems that it's gonna be that way, and I got one that appears to be lazy. So Well Carter's big thing is I I think he thinks he just wants to be rich to fix all the things that I have broken at my house and that he complains about. He's like, Dad, this place is a dump. I said, I will boy. They're remodeling the porch. Of course it looks bad right now. They just tore it all down. He called your house a dump? Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> now, that may be something we need to talk yeah. about. <laughs> He's like, it's all broken. I said, that's why these guys are here. Like, we had some rotten boards on the porch. He almost fell through. No, not really, but oh. he is a trip. And whatever comes. To- oh. Here's what he said the other day. Oh, even but I love this. this. I can't wait for this stage because I love this one got. No, nah, this one got. Like, well, this one got wild. We were late leaving for our Easter lunch. We were supposed to leave at eleven fifteen. The whole family knew it. We're like, hey, we gotta go. We're uh, we're in the car. We're going down the road, and Allison goes, Carter. We were supposed to leave twenty minutes ago. We got to go. And Carter goes, that's not very smart. It's eighteen minutes ago. I said, oh. boy. Oh, but he's just so literal. He doesn't catch on. Like, no, we're we're just rounding, buddy. So then we got a whole lesson in rounding. Did you did you turn around and give him a low five? No. Who was the reason he was? Who was the reason y'all was late? I, all of us. Oh, everybody. There's, there's a hundred people in my household. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, he was like twenty minutes. <laughs> no, eighteen. You dummies. Wrong. <laughs> Uh, when you're dealing with a very literal child, it's tough. So Poor presentation, but but yeah, we should get in another literal person in here. Yeah, who only speaks very literally. Which one? Our guest. Oh yeah, yeah. He doesn't talk in metaphor at all. Never. Um. But look, let's do it. Yeah, let's take a break. He's and he's we're gonna here. bring. You've asked for it. It'll take us a second to get him here. Give you a mild hint. 
Mm. He's from Tennessee. Mm. Tennessee boy. That's all I'm going to tell you. We'll be back right after this. If you're going to spend time riding a giraffe, you know what you need? You need to get on Fabric by Gerber Life and make sure you got you some term life insurance. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, because you got what? That's right, because driving a giraffe could be dangerous. There you go. Very dangerous. I mean, I I agree with Martin. Get insured, boys. Riding him be hard enough. Climbing him is going to be a battle. Getting on the circuit is going to be a battle. But if you fall off. You want oh, your family protected. Yeah. You do want your, you want your kids. You, in size case, you want your grandkids. Yeah. You want everybody protected. And that's what our friends over at Fabric by Gerber your, Life can do. Get rid of that junk. Just, hey, you want to get rid of it? Get rid of it. If you need more, you can get more. Right. You can get it all done at Fabric. That's what I'm here to tell you. Look, as a parent, top priority for your children are safety. And that's where our friends over at Fabric by Gerber Life can help. They can help give you peace of mind by searching and shopping for all the term life insurance you may need. They make it super simple. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to help you get high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance in as little as 10 minutes or less. Could be even less. You may not even have to have a health check. So hey, that's the best of all worlds. If you ain't got to leave and go to the doctor and you can get it done, boom, bow, bow, boom. There you go. In 10 minutes, you can apply, see your quote and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs, your budgets, whatever. Doesn't matter. You could be offered covered instantly with no health exam. Fabric has partnered with Gerber Life, trusted by millions of families like yours for over 50 years. They have over 1,600 five-star reviews on Trustpilot. Fabric has a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can cancel anytime. Fabric was specifically designed to give parents an affordable term life insurance option. I mean, that's just all it is to it. Hey, look, you can protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash duck. That's meatfabric.com slash duck. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash duck. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company, not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. You ready? <laughs> Drum roll. Heck yeah. Hey, He's hey, ready. Hey, hey. Right, thank y'all. Y'all figured out who it is yet? Uh, oh, All right, man. ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And well, I think you know who we've got in the the studio. It is not Bill Dant. That's okay, though. It is our good friend, Mountain Dog. Oh, Mountain Man. Mountain Man, Mountain Dog. Good to be here. Gee, I've been sitting over there watching y'all. Martin, (laughs) you talk so darn fast. I don't, I'm amazed at the way. Well, that's why they have me read the ads and not hey, you. Hey, no wonder I can't get no sponsors on my show. It just takes the next day to air, you know. That's exactly right. Look, Johnny D, you've come a long way over there, too, it looks like. <laughs> cut his hair and some of his whiskers off. I just cut my beard uh, off. Mountain I will Man. say, you are the first person to put your hat on over the headset. That's a good look. Well, he's a professional. He's been doing radio been doing for years. This for uh, a decade or more now, y'all. See? Mm. Look, my old man tossed a slow hunter, forgot to start the clock. That's what I was wild. just texting Hunter. Oh, clock. Backers. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the last two the last yeah. two texts I've sent Hunter are clock. <laughs> <laughs> one eight days ago, one today. Hunter, we should talk more. Oh man. But Mountain Man, welcome. To the duck call, officially, not via telephone. <laughs> Welcome I, to the duck I'm call. Room. You, I'm telling you, well, I appreciate it. Thank y'all for having me today. I've been hearing people coming on my Facebook, and they say, it's, it's good to hear you in the duck call room the other day, Mountain Man. I think I wasn't in the duck call room. <laughs> What's going on? And then another guy come on, I said, well, I may have filmed for a show. I kind of want to tell what it is, but it ain't aired that I know of yet. What is this? And then you told me you had me on speakerphone. You called me the other day, Mark. Well, you know, I knew you were safe. You were one of the people that if I call you and have you on speakerphone, I don't have to worry about. Some people I have to say, hey, you're on speaker. Um, <laughs> but you, you're, yeah. you're, you're like, uh, if I call you, no problem. If I call Phil, no problem. If I call Cy, no problem. But there's some, if you call them and say, uh, you're on speakerphone. Like, uh, yeah. That way they know to uh, know, play nice. Uh, tone it down. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, how's life been treating you there, Mountain Dog? You well, yeah, it's been treating me pretty good, you know. I had I went through a lot back last 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 year. I lost my dad, my brother, just within two months. 
Good grief. Yeah, and it kind of, I mean, it's like threw a rock at me. Oh, that hurts, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and then, you know, I moved up to Tennessee. I'm living in a camper up there. That's all right for a little while. <laughs> well, you try living in a camper, it ain't quite 30 feet long, one pull out with a high powered Australian blue hailer. <laughs> well, he's right under your feet all the time. <laughs> Uh, you wake up, he's in your bed, you're looking at a, a darn dog looking back at you, and he just, I don't know, but look, I've thought about maybe this year going on a good woman hunt. A good oh, woman hunt. good woman hunt. Boy, does that sound like a TV show that I would watch. Mountain Man, The Bachelor. The Bachelor right. Mountain style. Yeah, yeah. Hey. They got Farmer Needs a Wife now. They do? Mm-hmm, that's a TV show. He ain't a farmer. Well, we can make our own. I mean, he can farm, I suppose. He can do anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I grow watermelon, tomatoes, and more. String beans. <laughs> Zucchini. That's some good eating stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to fit in up there in East Tennessee, you know. I think you'll that, do fine. <laughs> is that tough? <laughs> It, look, I, I, I ain't for sure I fit in anywhere. Some of them said, "Boy, you just, you sound like you could be from here, but we really can't figure out where you come from." You know. But, well, you fit in here. Yeah, I fit in here. I fit in here. <laughs> Speaking of Kabuya, yeah, go ahead and tell us about Kabuya. Man, I have got my own spicy seasoning out, y'all. It's called Mountain Man's. Kabuya spicy seasoning, and look at that, y'all. Y'all can't see it. Well, y'all. Oh have. no, they can see it. Don't you? We put it up to the microphone. Y'all smell real hard. <laughs> Man, this is some good stuff, though. You can use it. I've been using it on eggs in the morning. It's good. Oh, it's good on eggs. It's good on eggs. You cook your bacon down in that skillet, and you. You get your bacon out, and you pour all the grease out, but leave it, you know, bacon grease in the bottom of your skillet, and then you sprinkle it on the bottom of your skillet, and you let it get hot. You smell it getting just right. Then that's when you pop your eggs. Sometimes I put a little milk down there in my eggs and roll them around in there with them eggs and put a little cheese. Oh, You sound like you used to work at the Waffle House. Hey, I've been up there a few times. Walk, you can watch them cook and learn something. <laughs> yeah, but look, this is, I've got it on. You can go to kabooya.com, Mountain Man's Kabooya, K-A-B-O-O-Y-A-H, Kabooya, spicy seasoning. I love it. Y'all know you need it. Once you get some of it, you try it. Your friends will love you. You'll start getting company back over to your house and you cook stuff. There you go. Hey. Johnny D's got it pulled up on if the If you're screen. struggling for company, head on to mountainmansworld.com or kabooya.com. And there you go. Stuff. There you go. It's some good stuff. Get y'all a Mountain Man t-shirt while you're on there. Hey, Mount, do I pull that back up? What are you looking at in that picture? Like Whatever you, it was, you, you made him happy. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you know, the way he's got their eyes know. cut. I don't know. Somebody caught me in a surprise. Yeah. These pictures they put up of me, I don't know where they get them. <laughs> I look like I was behind a pine tree taking a leak. I was uh, about to say the same thing. You look like you got tree. caught taking a leak behind some bushes. <laughs> like, uh, whoops. <laughs> My bad. Just give me a minute. Let me zip up, boy. <laughs> 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 It does. Cause I ain't seen the, you know, it blowed up that big. But <laughs> that gum, I gotta do something about that. Y'all, y'all don't. I, that's blowed up enough. Who's doing that back? <laughs> that's there? John Davis. That hey, gum, hear <laughs> bloodshot wrestle in my eyeball. Oh, Look, that's good man. stuff. Never mind my head on there. It is good stuff. Mm. Man, and use it on burgers, chicken, steaks on the grill. And it's blackening as well. It, oh, you, you can do it all. Y'all have had black. It's like a Swiss Army knife yeah. of seasoning. Yeah, hey, you ain't wolf. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what, that'll that'll blacken your fish right up, shrimp. Mm-hmm. 
It's hard to find any shrimp mm-hmm. up there in East Tennessee, ain't it? It is. I'm going, I guess, yeah, somebody's having a birthday party, and after that I'm going south to go get me some shrimp. You're kind of a world traveler, you know? You don't mind driving anywhere. Well, I've been single so dead burn long. My dog was born in the back of a Greyhound bus, I guess. It's been riding me. Don't you mean a Blue Heeler bus? Yeah. Not a great. <laughs> Not a great <laughs> hand, boy. That's a good mark. <laughs> <laughs> My dog was born in a back Blue Heeler bus, boy. Blue Heeler bus. Uh, Been riding ever since he's a puppy. But, yeah, I, I do go places. Yeah, that's. Uh, Making moves. He is. And that's, that's good. Mount Man, it's good to have you. We're going to jump into another break, and we'll be back right after this. Ten four. Thank you. first can the first batch that come out with it wasn't near about as red and it just didn't have enough kick it was just like cuff it was missing the booyah, booyah! It, uh, it was mountain uh, man's uh, cuss yeah, Without yeah the it, booyah. it couldn't have had an exclamation mark on it now if it wanted to but <laughs> it needed just a little bit we're worried about you know, people up north, you get a little bit too hot for them, which is nothing to us. And, oh, no, I can't eat it. But I got something kind of in between where Yankees down to us rednecks. How would you describe the flavor of that? Describe? Oh, it just it, it just excites your taste buds. I'd have to have my taste buds. It, it, it's like... Kind of like Tony Shackery's cross with a blackening and then a secret ingredient that I can't figure it out. You, got the, you don't know your own. You've got a flavor, but you just can't quite tell what it is. Uh, uh, it's, it's got, is that one open? That I'll one. try it right now. Let's open it. That's not, oh, it's, it is, it's uh, open because it's leaking. Oh, look, that ain't no bag of lace tater chips. Mountain Man fills it up to the top, folks. You ain't got no, you ain't got no gap. All right, let me, let me. Yeah, Martin says it's got. Put the top back on and throw it oh, over here. I'll eat it. Throw his head around there. Like no, it smells good. It was just a little. I mean, we are doing this in the morning. Yeah. So snipping uh, seasoning's was, not a not a pick solid. Up, pick up, JD. Oh uh, no! It smells good. No, it. it oh, oh, we're, oh uh, my! That was a heavy did. pour. Oh that was my! Heavier than I meant to do. That was a heavy pour. That's really good though. Yeah, it smells great. Like I'm not, I'm well, not it discounting that. Looks, it's good, it's good. <laughs> but I'm out of water. Yeah, and if it does have kaboom, so we're gonna take a break, and I'm gonna go get a glass of water. <laughs> it ain't too hot. No, it ain't too hot. That was just too much. Yeah. You, it, you dumped. Dump. Oh, he dumped like that was an accident. Half, half a, when, he, right, there was when Martin says the bottle comes yeah. full, he's not joking. I wasn't hey. kidding. <laughs> Look, like, mountain hey. man trying to take the lid off. It's he leaking took out the side. Shot of it. And, hey, they, yeah. you get your money's worth here. Both folks, you dang right, stuff okay. in there. JD oh. took a tablespoon of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> All I gotta say is, hey, that does have a good smell. Oh, I, I wouldn't. Oh no, it's good. That. It is good. It's kind of. I would have rather that on food than just straight and oh, as I've, much as I ate. But yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's really good on when food. I when I snap yeah. my head. <laughs> it's really good on when food. I say. <laughs> You ain't getting cheated on this, folks. No. This baby is to the top. When I, <laughs> yeah. Dang, right. when I snapped my head, it wasn't because it wasn't yeah. didn't smell good. It was just stronger than I thought, and I remembered it's 845 in the morning. So I was like, Am I eyes watering? Ooh. I'm good. Mine are. But I was going to say, that should make you know, like a steak taste really good. Oh, yeah. Like shrimp. Yeah. I, I, oh, I can, yeah. It smells like a good. Now, hey, I like, understand what he was talking about. When it, well, it's got something that, you, hey, you just. You, it's good. Try it in your teeth. No. no. <laughs> oh, you know what it'd be good on? The rim of your glass for your spicy mater juice. Oh, no. Yeah. It'd be good on that. Yeah, I mean, it, I I'm going to be honest. I'm not sad that I ate that straight. I'm oh. sad that the bite was that big, but. Yeah, it covered your tongue. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. No, there you go. It was better uh, than them I lemon packets. Really, didn't make Thank you. Really good Glad you time. like it. Johnny D. Oh, I need a glass of water. Yeah, let's not kid ourselves. It, but it probably was way better than dunking a little Debbie and W sauce. Yeah. But. 
It was way better than a Vienna sausage. I'll tell you that much. I, I, hey, what if you had a Vienna with some kabuya? It would actually. Man, it's good on Vienna sausage. Look at that. Well. It would make it way better. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, man. Heck, I feel like I'm, well, I'm 65, going to be 66 this year. Some days I feel like I'm going on 83. I don't know if Cy ever has any of them days or not. Oh, yeah. But uh, I said, well, if you're going to do it, do it now, because I'd like to get a show where I involve kids in it, you know, where kids could have a good show to watch, you know. Of course, no cussing and carrying on, no suggestive stuff. No, no it. liver punches. No, None of that. Uh, well, hey, look, <laughs> no liver punches. <laughs> Don't tell her. That daggum <laughs> willy leaked that out, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, look. But look, so we're. I'm going to do this part quick, but um, Cy always tells a story on here about when him and Willie – what in the world Sorry. are you doing? I don't know what's happening. I hear Bert barking. Yeah, evil Bert Cabeagle. I was looking at Mountain Man's yeah, Facebook. I, I didn't know the TV played uh, the sound now. There you go. Yeah. We got a new that, TV. That dog did sound familiar. That's Bert, wasn't it? Yeah, that's Bert. But he, Si always tells a story from the from Duck Dynasty when him and Willie were on your show. Do you remember that episode, Mountain Man? I do, I do. What did he do to annoy y'all? Do you remember that? <laughs> what did Willie do? No, Cy. Si. Si. <laughs> what, what was he doing? Did it go something like this? That bail. <laughs> and I think he stole the bail when he left. It, this might be it. There bro, it is, man. right is there. That it? <laughs> I believe it I is. Had, I had more fun on that episode. Because when we walked in, your receptionist had a little uh, plexiglass window, and this bell was sitting on the counter in front of it, mm -hmm. and she wasn't there. So I come in, and I, as soon as I seen it, I was behind Willie. I said, yep, okay, I got what I'm going to do for the show today. And it was... <laughs> that was good. I rang that bell the whole time I was there. That, I knew that I would want to talk about that because I knew that's where I these learned came. something there. I had more uh, fun than that episode. I have like a, uh, a weird feeling right in this region where I think my stomach starts from that seasoning. That was a heavy <laughs> dose. A weird feeling, boy. Heavy. This heavy. water's delicious. Hey, you needed that for a chaser after that big gulp. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> So Mount Man, I know one thing that um, the fa they've asked to have you on here. Some have for a while, so we finally were able to link up and get everything. But if you had to pick one memory from Duck Dynasty, what 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 is that? What what is your one memory? Like, what's the one thing that stands out? I got one of you, but I mean, of me personally. But I was I was curious on yours. Well, I always enjoyed the free food, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, but uh, it, it's a lot to choose from. I, I really enjoyed filming off my back porch that time, the wood chipper scene. Yeah. Where Willie, about, well, he had to go, and it wasn't number one either. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. I, I believe, you know, I believe, Si, you were really getting to him in that, that scene. A lot of times, you know, we may act like it's bothering us more than what it is. But I, I believe Si really got to him because Willie, after they shut that scene down, I was aggravating him on the microphone there. He took that football. I don't know if y'all remember him throwing that football at me. As hard as he could, I just seen it come. I stuck my hand up and bang! It hit my hand. It was headed right at my head, <laughs> and I had it kind of bounced in my hand like a one-handed catch, and it fell, dropped off the porch, and Jace caught it, and Willie run off, just run to the bathroom, stuck my bathroom up. Well, I think the one I remember most is you walking down the road with that squirrel. That was a good one, you know. That Willie's a heartbreaker, you know. I found that out. He just <laughs> took my squirrel. 
You know, but I made five dollars on it. And five. do you ever think walking down the road with a squirrel would get you to speak in at places and t-shirts and kabuya seats? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Phil says that old mountain man over there. Squirrel made him famous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and all that squirrel. That's what I told him. I, oh, I loved that squirrel. Tried to get it back from Willie, but couldn't get it back. But uh, Technically, no. answering a broken air conditioner call on a Sunday evening is what got you. Hey, you know, <laughs> I'd have never dreamed it in a million years. You know, Willie asked me that. I, you know, I knew Willie was involved in Buck Commander and Duck Commander and this, that, and the other, but... I thought it maybe it was for a commercial or something for one of them um, outdoor channels. And and I didn't know really what I was getting into that I walked out in that open field where I had a camper uh, jacking it, trying to get it up in the air or duck blind. And, yeah. And that's when I guess what was it, a possum or a coon or something scared Willie out of it. And, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know. That it was actually A and E nationwide. I, I asked Willie when I got over there to talk to him first time, and he said, It is A and E Mountain Man nationwide. I said, mm. <laughs> And it was on after that. I, 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 but I think I was only supposed to be in one scene. That, that's what I hear, but. Uh, they like me. Yeah. I'm glad they like me. And uh, the people love you. Well, I love them too. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I love everybody. I mean, we're supposed to love everybody, but they like me too. <laughs> 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 A lot of times in life, I'll just settle if somebody likes me because <laughs> ain't no way they could love me. Sometimes I feel, but maybe I'm underestimating. But yeah. I'll, they loved me, and uh, heck, it went on. So you learn. went to trade school route mm-hmm. instead of actually getting a degree from in college. college like, yeah. You know, yeah. Whatever. And then see so you no, all room dancing he can or fix anything. Yeah. I, I yeah. suggest that to anybody nowadays. I yeah. get a trade because I feel like we're going to need more of them in the future. And yeah, I'm all for trade schools, you know. You ain't got to have a college degree to keep up with me. <laughs> I, don't tell you, hey, that rhyme, I don't think any truer words have ever been spoken. Oh, right. oh man, you know, I, I like leave that, that alone. That. So, how long did you do? You did heat and air, what, close to forty years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah wild, I did it all. I mean, everything is. You still that. doing it? No, not lately. Just no. personally, if you if your air goes out and you can't right. breathe, right. or, <laughs> or good close friends or family, and yeah. You know, well, at 66, you probably don't need to be climbing in them crawl spaces where that stuff yeah, lives yeah, anymore. I, I, don't give me an extra year. I'm just 65, oh, 65 until October so now. But yeah, close enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, I pretty near had to drag a few of them younger brunks out in the days. You know, they couldn't take it. Them young kids they ain't used to that heat, some of them. Yeah. Well, let's take our last break. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back. We're Mount, back. Mountain Man, this is a segment where we, we read the fans' emails. Hello at duckcallroom.com. And here's the deal. People have been clamoring since we've started this thing to have Mountain Man on the show. But you, you know, through moving and all that, we finally have linked up. So for all those emails that say you need Mountain Man on the show. You're welcome. He's here. here. Yeah. We did it. Can't... uh. Don't know what I was going to say there. That was weird. Anyway, <laughs> can't, oh, I can't read all of them because there's literally, that. I typed in Mountain Man on my emails. It says many. It doesn't even give me a number. One of many. One of many. <laughs> uh, but Sloan emailed back a while back and asked uh, a question that he has. All right, go ahead. How much of Mountain Man's speech mannerisms are accurate versus embellishment? Well, been here for 30 minutes and it ain't changed. I think some people think that you just put on the slow uh, profile, yeah, you know. I, I think I, I'm that embellishment word I just hadn't read it in the dictionary yet. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I've had that a time or two, but after hanging out with me a while, 
they they know I'm like this. But I had a lady say that she was an elderly lady, and I really respected her. And uh, she was at a restaurant and listened to me talk at the table next to me. And, of course, I took pictures with everybody at the table she was with. But her, and she came up to me and says, do you really talk like that all the time, young man? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. And she said, I don't think you do. And then she walked on. <laughs> and that woman, I kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, you know. I, I mean, who on earth could fake that for that long it'd be hard to stay in character the whole yeah time. like that's a tough one <laughs> that's why everybody asks me like he really talk like that i'm like well i've known him for 10 plus years and i've never pretty heard anything different so <laughs> pretty much you know? you know every now and then if you get excited or something i might talk a half a mile an hour faster or so but not much which will get you, know? you up to a solid like 0. 0.6 well so. my man did this go back to your second grade teacher that slapped you <laughs> Hey, I look. I, Is that what caused this? He said, she, I'm going to start talking If slow. she's still alive, you out there, and you know who you are, I'm coming <laughs> after you. I'm going to sue you, lady. You run. <laughs> oh, you better write her a check. Oh, hey, that's Alex, right. Hey. Alec, Minnesota is where this happened. Oh, hey, Minnesota. Right. You better yeah. send her a check if she's the one that got you to talking like this. Who knows? You may never did. Then again, like, yeah, kaboo. you might have a little check. Kabooya. Kabooya. Right. I'll send you a, a jar of my kabooya. <laughs> uh, right. Special right. kabooya sauce, baby. Hey, hey, it's rock, Minnesota. They got some of this up there. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't know how to take it. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, you ever had somebody up north? I ain't saying this up north. I ain't picking on the Yankees, y'all. But, but look, you take some, you take some green beans, some string beans, and you got a girl serving them, and she dumps them off of her big spoon on the old plate, and they bounce. That's when they ain't gonna have much flavor in them, y'all. They ain't been cooked down to where they hit and plop. <laughs> if they bounce off your plate, they just all they did is throw them out of the can into a skillet and warm them and put them on your plate. Cause you said if the green beans they bounce. bounce, they'll bounce. I watched them bounce before. <laughs> See, I'm talking kind of fast, cause right now green beans that are like a check. Hey, bounce, baby. Hey. You don't want them. That's right. <laughs> no, they don't want them. They ain't been cooked. They uh, gonna bounce. Uh, that probably go uh, with a lot of other vegetables as well. But, yeah. That's funny. All right, and then Ben from Florida, he emailed in a while back and said he had a question for anybody, which, I mean, I think, Ben, you should probably have known this without asking, but. Is the name Mountain Man Mountain Man's actual name? Um, I look. I was Mountain Boy when I was a child. <laughs> mountain uh -oh. Baby. When I was then he grew into Mountain Man. <laughs> grow into a Mountain Man. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> for long, That's what I'll he called his son. Mount, Mountain <laughs> Paul for long, like Graham, Mountain Gramps or something's coming up. Like, That's what he. That's how he used to introduce his son whenever he'd come somewhere <laughs> with us. He said, "Yeah, this is my son, Mountain Boy." <laughs> Mountain Boy. Oh, Mountain Boy. I'm glad he's got him a girlfriend. That that boy, he, he loves the ladies. But he, he speaking of him, I'll say this real quick, not to throw you off the subject. He has got him a girlfriend he's had for a long time. She works for in Lebanon, Tennessee, but she works for the sheriff's department. Uh -oh. So she, he gets out of hand. She just go handcuff him, lock him on up. That's the only one. Yeah, mountain That's boy, but look. <laughs> I've been called, I had nicknames through high school. They called me Geronimo. I looked a little like an Indian. Then one guy shortened it up and called me Mo, like three stooges Mo, I guess. <laughs> and then one guy called me Modal, Modal one day, and that stuck. For years, some people still call me Modal. But one guy, when I got a job doing electrical work with these rednecks from Cottontown, Tennessee, they couldn't say my last name, Girardi. 
and they spit all over herself trying to say it. One of, <laughs> hey, well, one of them finally just says, G Roy. And when he said G Roy, that stuck. And I've been a G Roy for a long time till I moved here. When I was living in Indiana, though, they called me Tennessee. But that was before the G Roy. That was before the. Oh, that was after the G Roy. What was it? I don't know. G Roy, Modal Mountain. But anyway, yeah, Mountain Man, Marty Good Day, a Cajun from around here, the nickname me Mountain Man after I moved here. From, and it kind of stuck. And it's. That one has really stuck. stuck. That one uh, stuck. I think you with that one the rest of you. I your day, yeah, yeah. yeah that, if, a mountain man, but I used to be mountain boy. <laughs> mountain boy. Now we know that he was modal. He was Mo. G Roy. G Roy. And his first name is but a mystery. It's uh, Tim. But... Tim. Mama named me Timothy after Timothy in the Bible. She want make that boy do right. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mama you tried, go. didn't she? Mama tried. Mama tried. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She, hey, Mama was a very good Christian woman. Sure was. Dad, too. You know. Love it. Bless her heart. Love it. Well, Mount Man, we appreciate you coming on. This is the the end of the show where we uh, where we throw it up with a Bible verse. I got one. You got one. I got a Mountain I, Man. I'm glad y'all followed my lead after all these years having a Bible verse at the end of the show. You know, I did that to start with, and uh, I would love to say that we got that from you, but. You can't on there, no. I, or I might could sue y'all, get some money or something. How much money and nothing like suing people there? over you using the the word of the yeah, Lord. Yeah, nothing, nothing like <laughs> nothing. I'm just cutting up. Uh, no, I, I suggest everybody try to do something like this. But well, this Johnny one, D. Send us this out one here. came to me when Mountain Man was talking about trade school. Worked hard for forty years, and then you never know what's going to happen. And I believe that's because. Mount Man, you followed this verse in First Thessalonians four eleven and twelve. Make it your, as Phil Robertson would say, ambition to lead a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and that you will not be dependent on anybody. And if you do that, you never know what buying a squirrel. Will make your life look like. That's what I'm talking about. Kabuya! Oh, uh, Mountain Man, before we get out of here, though, what what's your website? That way people can check you out. We'll let we'll let you throw that out there one more oh, time. Yeah, yeah. Y'all go to old mountainmansworld.com. I know it's not my world, but hey, mountainmansworld.com or kabuya.com. There you check go. Out. And check him out on Facebook. He's he's very active on there. Yeah. You can see him and Bert. But Mountain Man, he, we appreciate you. Bert jumped over a fire and caught a frisbee the other day on Facebook. Oh, yeah. We, we go out on a limb doing our videos. Still can't make no money off however you're supposed to make money <laughs> off of them. I can't make a dollar. But look, Bert's jumping over fires. I'm standing out in front of trains. Still can't make money on that video. But and that's a story for another time. That's a story <laughs> for another day. We'll I see y'all next time right here in the duck call room. We're out. Later. Later.